Good morning, Kev at Leeds Harmonica here. This video is going to be an introduction or guide to a 12 bar blues. What is it? How do you navigate it? How do you start thinking about wanting to play along with it? How do you count along to one? How do you know one when you hear one? Okay, um, for some people this is going to be super, super basic. Um, I'm really going to spend a lot of time just counting through. So if you think you know all this stuff anyway, then great, go and play. But for, I know for a lot of people, going through this stuff is incredibly beneficial and increases their understanding of the music that they're trying to play. Having said that, I'm not going to play any harmonica at all in this video. Um, this The stuff I'm going to talk about here will apply equally for any instrument. Okay, so um, let's get going. Okay, let's define some terms. Um, 12 bar blues. What's a bar? A bar, for our purposes, is simply a count of four. One, two, three, four. Okay? When our hands are together, or when your foot taps on the floor, that's called the downbeat. One, downbeat. And when they're apart, or when your foot is in the air, if you're tapping your foot, we call that the upbeat. Downbeat, upbeat, downbeat, upbeat, downbeat, upbeat, downbeat, upbeat. Okay, so a bar is simply a count of four. This is going to sound ridiculous, but I'm going to get you to do a lot of clapping and counting along, okay? So literally the first job is just one, two, three, four. You can clap your hands, you can tap your foot, you can slap your leg, whatever you want. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Four. That's what we're going to be doing, okay? So, obviously, if we've got one bar, is a count of four. In a 12-bar blues, there is going to be 12 counts of four. That encompasses the blues form. And what will happen in a blues song is you'll have one set of 12 bars, and then that will repeat and repeat and repeat and repeat until the end of the song. Okay, so I'm going to put a jam track on here. It's one I've used in loads of my videos. It's a very basic... Um, Shuffle Blues uh, from Jimmy Lee's Groove Tracks. Obviously, I'll link everything. Um, I say it every time. Just buy this set if you're trying to learn to play blues. It's a wonderful, wonderful set of jam tracks. Um, okay, here we go. So, I'm going to put it on. I'm going to let the first... By the way, something I didn't mention in the last section is we call one set of 12 bars. We call that a chorus, okay? So, I'm going to, we're going to listen to one chorus, one run through the 12 bars. And I'm going to count through, I'm just going to one, two, three, four my way through it, okay? And if you're new to this, um, literally don't do anything for this bit, just watch while I count through, okay? And see what's happening. One, two, three, four. 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 Thing starts off again okay actually that's a little bit fast I'm gonna slow it down just a touch but um, now it's your turn to join in okay I told you this is gonna be basic I'm hoping this is gonna be useful for some people okay so we're literally gonna count through one two three four and the idea of doing this is that you really want to internalize that rhythm you want to get you want to get the feel for it you want to know where those beats are and it needs to become instinctive, right? You can't do this enough. You could spend all afternoon doing this. When you're driving around, you want to be thinking one, two, three, four, you know, when you're waiting for something, just have that rhythm in your head, okay? This is really, really key to um, getting this music under your skin. Here we go, count with me. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Let's do 
it again. One, two, three, four. 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 Okay. Let's stop that. You cannot do that enough, okay? If you've never done this before, if you're not used to thinking in these terms, have fun with that. Knock yourself out, okay? Do it 10, 20, 50, 100 times, okay? Get that feel before we start to go on because we're going to start looking at um, how this fits together a little bit now. Okay, so the next concept we need to look at and discuss is the idea of chord changes. What's a chord? Why are they changing? Let's put the jam track back on, okay? And we're going to listen to just the first eight bars and then I'm going to stop it. Okay, so this we've kicked off, it's trundling along. Bar one sounds very much like bar two, but what happened there? The sound of the music's changed, right? It's different somehow. And then it's gone back to where it began. One, two, three, four. So that's the first eight bars of the blues. And you can hear that something changes there, right? I told you this was going to be basic, but this concept is very new to some people, okay? And it takes a little while for that to sink in if you're not used to thinking about it. Let's listen to that again. Listen for where that change happens. I'm not going to say anything. Okay, so hopefully you can hear what's happening there. The What's happening is a chord is simply um, a collection of notes that sound harmonious and nice together, okay? So the band, the guitar and the bass in this case, are playing notes associated with a particular chord, and they're playing notes from a scale associated with a specific chord. They're playing a chord, okay? They do that for the first four bars, then for bars five and six, they're changing it up. They're playing a different chord. So the whole feel of the music shifts. They're going from playing one set of notes to playing another set of notes. So the sound is different and it gives you a feeling of movement. It's like you've been here and now, oh, we're over here for a bit. Bars uh, seven and eight, it comes back to the chord they're originally playing. Okay, so we've got four bars playing one set of notes two bars playing another set of notes, and then another two bars going back to where we started. Okay, so let's continue through that chorus and see if we can hear where the other chord changes happen. I'm going to kick that jam track off again from the beginning, and here we go. Up to bar three, all the same. Here comes our first change, bar five, bar six, and we're back home. Okay, the last four bars are coming up. Listen to these last four bars. One change, that's a change, and that's a change. And then, very quickly at the end it changes again. So. As this uh, form progresses, the chord changes get more frequent as it goes along, okay? What I am going to do now is we need to start um, calling these chords something, okay? So I'm going to put a little diagram to magically appear here somewhere. That's 12 little boxes. Obviously, each box represents a bar. And I have put some Roman numerals in the boxes. Okay, this is a weird concept to get your head around. I'm not going to go into the theory of why we're using these numerals. I know it's counterintuitive, okay? 
The first four bars, that is our one chord. We're calling the first chord that comes along our one chord, Roman numeral I, okay? When bars five and six come along and the chord changes, as we heard, that chord we're going to call the four chord, okay? Don't ask me why, take my word for it, okay? We'll, we'll cover why later. We just need to know that we've got a chord called the one chord and we've got a chord called the four chord, okay? Bars six and seven goes back to, uh, sorry, bars seven and eight goes back to the one chord. They go back to the, the band goes back to the chord they were originally playing. Bar nine, we get a new chord. We've not heard this chord in the form before, and we're calling this the five chord, okay? So we've got a one chord, we've got a four chord, and we've got a five chord. I know this doesn't make a lot of sense if you're not used to hearing it. I just want you to get used to calling it the one, the four, and the five, okay? So bar nine, we've got the five chord. The next bar, we play the go back to the four chord, and we play the four chord for a bar. And then we are back, for the rest of the form, we are back to the one chord, dum, 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 except for, you know, halfway through the uh, final bar, it jumps back quickly to the five chord, <laughs> okay? So, I know this is confusing, but we've got a one chord, a four chord, and a five chord, okay? I am gonna put the jam track on again, and we're gonna learn where they are, okay? Follow along, one chord. Keep an eye on the diagram and try and follow along, okay? Still on the one chord. Bar three. Here comes the four chord. Bar five and bar six. Back to the one chord. And now things get really busy. Okay? Five chord. Four chord. One chord, five chord, okay, follow along, one chord, one chord, one chord, coming up to bar five, the four chord, four chord, back to the one chord, one chord, Five chord, four chord, one chord, five chord. One more time, one chord. I just want you to keep doing this. One chord. We're on the one chord. You've got to know where these chords are. One chord. This is how musicians refer to them, okay? The four chord. You want to play with other people, you need to know this. Four chord. Back to the one chord. Back to the one chord. And then we got the five and the four and the one to the five. Okay. Sometimes there won't be a five chord at, at the very end there, it'll just whiz through, but um, I'll come on to look at uh, variations of the form in the future. Okay. Um, I hope that makes sense. I know if you're not used to thinking about it, it takes a little bit of time to sink in. But this is really, really important, okay? This is the way that 12 bar blues fits together. Even if you don't want to be a blues player, even non-blues players will get together and if they've never jammed before, uh, never met each other before, they can play along to a blues because everyone understands this form, okay? it's This is... Um, bread and butter, bread and butter stuff, okay? So the your job is to listen to blues, um, listen to uh, jam tracks and just follow along and know where that one chord is. You will get to the point, if you listen to this enough and if you count through enough, you'll get to the point almost that you can start a track at a random place and know where you are, okay? Um, <clears throat> might sound impossible, but it's true. Um, just fantastic stuff. Keep doing that. If you're not used to thinking in these terms, keep just listening and going through the one chord. Da -do -do -do. One chord for the four, 
uh, first four bars, then the four chord bars five and six, back to one chord bars six and seven, and so on. Okay, so if you knew all that, you'll have stopped watching long ago. Um, if, you, if you're still here, thank you for bearing with me, and I hope that that was useful for you. Um, lots more to dig into. Really, the key message is just to listen to blues, listen for that one chord, listen where that change comes to the four, change for the f back to the one, to the five, to the four, to the one, do 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 back to the five, and the whole thing kicks off again. Um, a lot of people know that instinctively, but it's useful to sort of see it written written down sometimes, and it's useful to listen to jam tracks and uh, your favourite blues songs, just listen along, count along, and learn where those changes are. Okay, thanks for bearing with me, lots more to dig into in the future, I'm, I'm quite excited about this whole, uh, whole idea, so I, I hope you follow along with me.